Have you ever wondered why Pluto is no longer considered a planet? Our story begins in the early 20th century, when a young American astronomer named Clyde Tombaugh made an astonishing discovery. In the year 1930, while meticulously examining photographic plates at the Lowell Observatory in Arizona, Tombaugh spotted a tiny dot moving against the backdrop of static stars. This was none other than Pluto, initially classified as the ninth planet in our solar system. You see, back then, telescopic technology was quite limited, making it difficult to accurately determine Pluto's size and composition. These constraints heavily influenced the initial perception of Pluto as a fully-fledged planet. So, originally Pluto was considered our ninth planet, but not for long. Let's delve into what sets Pluto apart from its planetary neighbors. Tucked away in the outer reaches of our solar system, this small celestial body has some distinct characteristics. Firstly, it's much smaller than any other planet. In fact, it's not much bigger than our moon and is even smaller than seven of the solar system's moons. Pluto's composition also sets it apart. While planets like Earth and Mars are rocky and Jupiter and Saturn are gas giants, Pluto is a mixture of rock and ice. This icy composition has led to some stunning geographical features, like its heart-shaped glacier, informally known as Tombaugh Regio, named after Clyde Tombaugh, the man who discovered Pluto. Then there's Pluto's peculiar orbit. Unlike the almost circular orbits of the eight planets, Pluto's path around the Sun is highly elliptical, sometimes bringing it closer to the Sun than Neptune. This eccentric orbit raised eyebrows among astronomers, as it deviated significantly from the norm. Pluto also has a unique relationship with the Kuiper Belt, a region of the solar system beyond Neptune filled with small icy bodies. As the largest known object in the Kuiper Belt, Pluto's connection to this region began to raise questions about its classification as a planet. After all, if Pluto was a planet, then shouldn't other large Kuiper Belt objects also be planets? These factors, the size, the icy composition, the unusual orbit, and the connection to the Kuiper Belt, began to create a different narrative for Pluto. Instead of neatly fitting into our understanding of what a planet should be, Pluto seemed to exist in a category of its own. These anomalies started to paint a different picture of Pluto. But what does it really mean to be a planet? Well, the International Astronomical Union, or the IAU, is the authority that sets the standards. The IAU defines a planet as a celestial body that orbits the Sun, is spherical in shape, and has cleared its orbit of other debris. Let's break it down. First, a planet must orbit the Sun, check for Pluto. Second, it must be round or nearly round, check again for Pluto, so far so good, right? But here's where Pluto stumbles. The third criterion requires a planet to have cleared its orbit of other debris. In other words, it must be gravitationally dominant in its vicinity. But Pluto resides in the Kuiper Belt, a region beyond Neptune filled with millions of icy bodies. Pluto is one of the largest bodies in this region, but it isn't gravitationally dominant. It hasn't cleared its neighborhood, and so, by the IAU's standards, it doesn't qualify as a planet. Now this decision didn't come without debate. Many in the scientific community disagreed with the IAU's definition. Some argued that the requirement to clear an orbit is ambiguous, and that it doesn't reflect the diverse characteristics of celestial bodies. Others pointed out that even Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and Neptune haven't completely cleared their orbits. These debates highlight an important aspect of science. It's a dynamic, evolving field. Definitions can change as our understanding deepens, and classifications can shift as new information comes to light. Despite the controversies, the IAU's decision stands. Pluto, once known as the ninth planet from the Sun, is now officially classified as a dwarf planet. A dwarf planet meets the first two criteria of the IAU's definition but falls short on the third. So, according to the IAU, Pluto didn't make the cut. It's a reminder that in the vast expanse of the cosmos, there's still so much to learn, so many definitions to refine and so many classifications to reconsider. The discovery of Eris was a game changer. This celestial body discovered in 2005 was initially thought to be larger than Pluto, sparking a heated debate in the scientific community. Eris, like Pluto, resides in the icy outskirts of our solar system, in an area known as the Kuiper Belt. This belt is a vast frontier filled with numerous small bodies left over from the solar system's formation. But Eris wasn't alone. As technology advanced, astronomers began identifying more and more of these trans-Neptunian objects, or TNOs. These bodies ranging in size and composition were like distant cousins to Pluto, sharing similar characteristics and in some cases even rivaling its size. The growing list of TNOs presented a conundrum. If Pluto was considered a planet, shouldn't these other objects be given the same status? 
the lines between what constituted a planet and what didn't, were becoming increasingly blurred. It became evident that a clearer more precise classification system was needed. In response, the International Astronomical Union, or IAU, took action. They crafted a new definition of a planet, one that Pluto unfortunately couldn't meet. The key criterion that Pluto failed to satisfy was the need for a planet to clear its orbit of other debris. Pluto's neighborhood, the Kuiper Belt, is just too crowded. This decision by the IAU wasn't without controversy. Many argued against the demotion of Pluto, citing its historical status as a planet and its unique characteristics. But the discovery of Eris and other TNOs had set a precedent. The universe was not as neatly organized as we once thought, and our definitions had to evolve to reflect this complexity. The universe was proving to be far more complex than we could have imagined. Just as the discovery of new species can reshape our understanding of biology, so too can the discovery of new celestial bodies redefine our perception of the cosmos. As we continue to explore the far reaches of our solar system and beyond, who knows what other exciting discoveries await us. The New Horizons mission brought us even closer to the mystery that is Pluto. This groundbreaking endeavor launched in 2006, journeyed across the breadth of our solar system to reach the distant dwarf planet. It unveiled a world far more complex and dynamic than anyone could have imagined. The New Horizons spacecraft, a marvel of modern technology, propelled us into an era of new discoveries. It revealed a richly diverse landscape on Pluto, adorned with towering mountains of ice and vast plains of frozen nitrogen. This unexpectedly varied terrain sparked a wave of new questions, fueling the curiosity of scientists and space enthusiasts alike. What's more, the mission unveiled a blue-tinged atmosphere, remarkably composed of nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide. This discovery was simply astonishing. It challenged our understanding of the outer solar system and painted a vivid picture of a world in constant flux, where seasons change over centuries rather than months. These revelations have far-reaching implications. They offer a fresh perspective on the nature of dwarf planets, reshaping the way we categorize celestial bodies. And they shed light on the complex processes that shape these distant worlds, expanding our knowledge of the universe. But perhaps the most significant implication of Pluto's reclassification and the insights gained from the New Horizons mission is the realization that our understanding of the universe is always evolving. As we continue to explore the cosmos, we must be ready to challenge old notions and embrace new ideas, even if it means redefining what we consider a planet. The exploration of Pluto, once considered the ninth planet of our solar system, has opened a new frontier in space exploration. It's a testament to our insatiable curiosity and our relentless pursuit of knowledge. As we delve deeper into the cosmos, we continue to unravel the mysteries of our universe one dwarf planet at a time. Pluto might not be a planet, but it's still key to understanding our universe. As we journey further into the cosmos, let's remember that every celestial body, be it a planet, a dwarf planet, or a distant star, holds a piece of the grand cosmic puzzle that we're all trying to solve. So, where does this leave Pluto, you may ask? Well, the consensus among the scientific community is firm. Pluto is a dwarf planet. This reclassification has significantly broadened our understanding of the solar system. No longer limited to the nine planets we've grown up knowing, we now realize our cosmic neighborhood is teeming with diverse bodies like Pluto, each with unique stories to tell. This isn't to say the debate is entirely settled. As our telescopic technology and space exploration capabilities continue to advance, we may yet discover new information that could prompt a re-evaluation of Pluto's status. After all, the universe is a dynamic and ever-evolving place, and our understanding of it must adapt accordingly. Whether a planet or not, Pluto continues to captivate us all. Its journey from planet to dwarf planet is a testament to the relentless pursuit of knowledge, reminding us that in the world of astronomy, there's always more to uncover.